All right, let's try, uh, we'll try again. So, step one, same idea as Ethan said, because we're working now with odd integers, right, we're still using the same induction process, but because it's an odd integer, we can imagine that as all the odd integers for n greater than or equal to one, because one is just an odd integer. And then I've got the proof true for n equals one, and that's just gonna be three to the one plus seven to the one equals to 10. And I know that's divisible by 10. So in this case, yeah. uh, you notice um, our, our previous question had like k over 2. Yes. So this would be like possibly a whole k. Yeah, yeah. So when we're assuming true for n equals to k now, can you tell me, Armand, what kind of value is that k going to be? Because I know that n is an integer, but it's a special type of yeah, integer. Like yeah, it's going to be odd, right? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be odd. So when you're assuming true for n equals to k, you don't have to kind of make sure that this value is odd. You can just say, oh, when you're assuming true for n equals to k, you know that's going to work. So in this case, k has to be an odd integer. Okay, so you can, you can assume that. That's what you're really writing when you're saying assume true. Um, on your paper, you said test if the... What did you say? Test. Let n equal to k be a value for which the result is true. So you're assuming this is a value which works, so it has to be an odd integer. And I'll just rewrite that. That's just going to be 3 to the k plus 7 to the k would equal to 10 to the m, where m is an integer. Now the fun part. Step three. Uh, Mitch, what am I going to prove true for? Sorry? For step three, what am I going to prove true for? Uh, k plus one. Am I? So if I'm starting with an, am I, if oh, I'm starting with an odd... No. Okay, so let's come back to this. K no. plus two minus one. No. Okay, so like I said, right, we don't have to guarantee that this k value will be odd. We can assume that k is odd because you're assuming that it works for this. That's what you mean. We're wrong. We're that's what you mean when you say assume true. What is it for odd, though? So if I'm thinking about the numbers... K minus one. Yeah, you're right, but here, you don't have to make it so complicated. If you just think about all the odd numbers, what do they differ by? Two. Right. So in the same way, right, if you're starting with an odd number, n equals to k, k is odd, yeah. how do I get to the next odd number? Add two. Add two? So just k plus two? Exactly. Even though I have an odd and even numbers, right, when you start the proof, when you're assuming true for n equals to k, you're assuming that this case is an odd integer. And so to get to the next odd integer, you just have to add two, right? So prove true for n equals to k plus two. Just think back to the dominoes, right? You're trying to get to the next number in the sequence. In this case, I just have to just add two, right? And so really what I'm trying to do is three to the k plus two plus seven to the k plus two is equal to 10 n where n is an integer. Um, <coughs> let's work through it together. We've got over here, I've got 3 to the k plus 2 plus 7 to the k plus 2 equals to 10n, where n is some integer. Um, I'm on, well, how could I rewrite this so I've got some different index notation here? Say three to the power k Good. Three to the power two. Good, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry, I should have wrote here that we're starting with LHS. Okay, always start with one side. Yeah. Um, now, a helpful suggestion, like I said earlier, is that it actually is possible to try and find this within this expression, but what might potentially be easier for you is if you just rewrite it so that you have one of these terms as a subject. Yeah. So let's say 3 to the k equals to 10m minus 7 to the k. Can I find 3 to the k anywhere in there? Yeah. Where? First one. All right, the first one. So instead of 3 to the k, I'll write 10m minus 7 to the k. Just going to replace it. Times, so, I'm not, so I can just rewrite 3 squared as 9, plus 7 to the k, and 7 squared as 49. Now, what's a helpful thing to think about is these 7 to the k's, right? The issue is I don't really know what the value of k is. It can be anything. It represents anything. I can just imagine these like variables. Imagine them like x's or y's or a's or b's that you're more used to seeing. So when you're multiplying this bracket out, 
just imagine that these are separate terms. So here I've got 9 times 10m. That would just be 90m. But when I'm multiplying this out here, if I imagine this like a variable, I'm having 9 lots of 7 to the power k, or negative 7 lots to the power k. So I would write that as 9 times 7 to the power k. Okay, so I'm just, just trying to treat it like a variable almost. And then over here I would have 49 lots of 7 to the k. I'm just going to rewrite it that way so it's a bit easier to see. And because I'm almost treating these like variables, if I have negative 9 lots of 7 to the k and 49 lots of 7 to the k, I can put those two together, can't I? Right? Because these kind of have the same um, variable, almost. Uh, so it would be what? 58 times 7 to the k? Well, I've got negative 9 and I've got oh, positive yeah, 49. Um, 40 yeah. to Good, right. So I've got 90m yeah. minus, not minus, sorry, four, plus 40 times 7 to the k. Because you've got negative 9 lots of something, positive 49 lots of something, you put them together, that's just 49 minus 9, that gives me 40. And then, you take 10 out of five. good, don't forget the goal of what you're trying to do, right? I'm trying to find, up here, 10 lots of some integer. And I can see that I've got these values here, which both have a common factor of 10. I can take that out, 10 outside of 9m, plus, in brackets, yep. 4 times 7. 4 times 7, okay, well done equals to 10n, where 9n plus 4 times 7 to the k is integer. And I should have specified up here, this was from step 2, so. Cool. And Fine. Mitch's favourite part, uh, I'm just going to write, therefore... How do you see if the result is true if n equals k, then it is true for n equals k plus whatever we just did. What is it true for next? K plus 2. Good. Therefore, true by mathematical induction. 